Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. It is great to see you all, and I hope you all are doing good. Today let's see how the smartwatches calculate blood oxygen level SpO2 and what technology they are using to calculate the oxygen measurement. Before jumping to the video, first of all, welcome all to Engineering Semester channel. Here we are providing new emerging technologies tutorials. Nowadays, I hope most of you are having a smart watches or smart band with fitness features, right? Have you ever think about how the smart watches calculate those fitness features, what technology they are using in it? Now let's take one smart watch feature. That is blood oxygen level SpO2. Let's look how smart watch calculate blood oxygen level from human body. Monitoring your blood oxygen levels is one of the most crucial things to do during a COVID infection and could help determine if you need medical attention. If you are talking about blood oxygen level, then you must discuss this device. I think most of them aware of this device. This is oximeter. An instrument for measuring the proportion of oxygenated hemoglobin in the blood. Oximeter is used in medical purpose and give the most accurate blood oxygen level from human body. A clip-like device called a probe is placed on a body part, such as a finger or earlobe. The probe uses light to measure how much oxygen is in the blood. This information helps the healthcare provider decide if a person needs extra oxygen or not. The process is called pulse oximetry test. Both fingertip pulse oximeters and modern smartwatches can read your blood oxygen levels. You should understand the fact that a good oximeter is considered more reliable for the measurement of SpO2 compared to a smartwatch. This is because of the difference in technology. There are two non-invasive ways to measure blood oxygen label. Those are reflectance oximetry and transmittance oximetry. They both use two light sources like infrared and red light and a photodetector. The difference in working is based on the positioning of the components. Next let us see these technologies one by one. The transmittance oximetry, which is considered the gold standard of SpO2 measurement. It uses sensors placed at two ends of the device. When a finger is placed in an oximeter, one end of the device emit light using a light source, which then passes through the finger and then hits the sensors at the other end. These sensors are photodiodes. Now sensor reads the light properties and wavelength etc. and calculates the SpO2 level. Due to their working, transmittance oximetry is most effective in a thinner measurement site, like your finger. Next let us see how the reflectance oximetry works. Reflectance oximetry is used in smartwatches and fitness bands. The SpO2 is measured through the light that reflects from the blood under the skin. This is because the light emitting sensors, as well the sensors that read the light are both on one side. In other words we can say, there is no transmitting light measurement in a smartwatch, only the reflecting light. The diode captures light reflected off the target measurement site. For example, in the case of a smartwatch, your wrist will be the measurement site. The light that reflects from the underlying skin is then detected by the diode, which takes a reading. The calculation is same as before by measuring the, the light properties and wavelength etc. The reason reflectance oximetry is often used in smartwatches and fitness trackers is because it does not require a thin sight for measurement. Now the big question is, which technology is more accurate? As you can understand from we described so far, the transmittance oximetry is more accurate because it is reading light that is passed through a part of the body. This allows for more precise and minute measurements. In practice, good smartwatches like Apple Watch do come close to the reliability and consistency of an oximeter. This is because, while technology is one thing, the quality of sensors, the quality of devices, and the accuracy of how data is read and processed matter too. There is no evidence that any smartphone technology is accurate for the measurement of blood oxygen saturation for clinical use. So smartwatches SpO2 should not be trusted in the clinical assessment of patient. I hope this video was helped you to understand. 
how the smartphone SPO2 measurement to certain extent. That's it for now. See you soon with another video. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.